seventh web chat. I believe this is our, our seventh one. We've done a series of six, and we are calling this uh, Smiths and Lessons, the Schoolmaker Edition. I'm Kristen Linton. I'm the Director of Leadership Annual Giving here at the Web School in Del Buckle, and I work in the Alumni Development Office. I'm a former Spanish teacher, a graduate of the class of 2000, and I'm joined today by two of my teachers, L.R. Smith and Ron Smith, both beloved um, web faculty members, English teacher and history teacher. Thank you both so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure. We're very excited. Um, I have been following Smiths and Lessons for some time now, and I would love to know, one, where the branding came from, because it's genius, and two, who came up with Smiths and Lessons? Ron Smith. <laughs> I do, and it began with my recognition of LR's interest in firearms. Oh, and yes. <laughs> and it just seemed perfect to me. And, uh, but if this all began to knock on that door, I had not seen an alarm in a few months, and I told myself, one of these days I'm just going to knock on the door. Hello, invited me in, asked me to speak, I believe it was on the other side. <laughs> he sat in his chair and carried on, and I carried on a piece of the entire thing. And this is fun. This is fun going back and forth. And that's really where we started. I was teaching ethics at the time. And, uh, and so, so, yeah, so what did I know about ethics? So, 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 so basically, I was uh, teaching, yeah, just good you know, philosophy, really. And, uh, and Ron came and knocked on the door and said, Gosh, man, come on in. You're the guy who invented. Yeah, back in the 90s. I said, I want the kids to ask you some questions. And Ron says, Do you think they are? I said, Oh, yeah. And so, yeah. So I said, Here, Ron Smith, he, he, he made this thing, asking questions. <laughs> and so they started asking, and, and Ron, like, like, yeah, the old world smelling gunpowder, just off to the racing. <laughs> and at the I said to the class, he says, says, no, but what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to do the other class. <laughs> By the end of the day, he said, okay, we're, we're team teaching now. And Wayne Pryor came in, or at least he had one of his uh, student friends come in and, and, and videotape a portion of it at the end of Wayne in his own and looked for the way he says, well, you know, maybe we have to do this a little more often. Here we have somebody who's uh, possibly reading this, and then another here who maybe he left too early. He still loves us. He collapses. It's perfect symmetry there. And so it's been a blast. There's nothing like learning and, and, and teaching when it's fun. I mean, that's that's what Sonny said. Make them understand that it's a game. He did. Yeah. And then when the COVID came, so it was, it was March of 20, you know, when all of a sudden everything shuts down. Uh, and I'm going, oh, I guess, I guess that's it for this year. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't, don't know the first thing about, about Zoom or virtual or anything like that. And, uh, and Ron comes up and says, oh, yeah, we can do this. But Ron says, we're going to go into a library and Ray Mondo is going to set us up and, and we're just going to lecture to the camera. And, uh, and, and we certainly did that. Uh, we, we, we did a grading period of Smiths and Lessons. And then at the end of that grading period, Ron says, oh, shoot, Ron, let's do the other grading period too. And so we spent that summer. Uh, over at the library and recorded how many hours? I think 38 to 40 hours. In any given session, we would shoot for 50 minutes. More times than not, it, it would be 50 minutes in and we would have to make ourselves stop We put five minutes on it. And uh, so there was no lack of things we were, I mean, we had plenty to say. Oh, absolutely. So we, we put the whole course uh, on YouTube uh, over, over, yeah, over that Spring and summer of uh, 2020. 
So now this is what your, your 39th hour of or 40th hour of Smiths and Lessons. Let's call it 40. Like that. <laughs> 40 Can I see the number? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for coming up the hill and spending some time with us in the junior room. Um, I love that the two of you partnered after having spent a significant amount of time on the faculty together. And um, I love that in this kind of new and progressive way, you have been um, engaging with students via Zoom and YouTube. And it brings to mind, you know, our, our schoolmaker, <laughs> Sonny, who... Um, I don't know that people think of him as a progressive educator, but as I had revisited the schoolmaker this time around to prepare for today, I realized that much of his thinking was actually way ahead of his time. And I'm hoping we can sort of talk through that tonight. Um, could, Ella, could you give us a little bit of the history of how this book came to be? I mean, this is the second or this is the newest edition, the 150th. So well, this was written by, um, it was Lawrence McMillan, but how did he come to write the first um, edition? It's, it, it, it's my understanding, Lawrence McMillan uh, was uh, in the English faculty that at the Webb Schools of Claremont, California, and uh, undertook, and I'm not, I personally am not sure the reason that he undertook it, but he undertook to write uh, the biography of Sony Webb. And so, you know, again, did, did, did much research, et cetera, et cetera, and, uh, uh, and came out with the book, what, in the you know, late 70s, you know, 71? Uh, yeah, yeah, as a matter of fact, this is a, this is a first edition right here. This is, I mean, Jack Heffern gave me this copy, I'm thinking. A certain West Highland white terrier. Uh, not a beagle? Chewed that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> this is back in a previous lifetime. Uh, chewed that corner out. <laughs> and frankly, I would say I, I, I didn't read it for some time. Um, and uh, it probably wasn't until I was teaching eighth grade history and we. Mm -hmm. Just and, and figured, figured better work it into just the curriculum. And so I, I know I wrote up a quiz for it years ago and, uh, and many years ago. So it wasn't yeah. required reading until you made it required reading, or? I made it required reading for seniors, some of whom read it, some of whom skimmed it, and whatnot. And I, I remember having some questions from LR's quizzes from eighth grade. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it was it was a standard thing for all seniors. I mean, my my situation was such that I thought, well, let's at least make sure they know the foundation. It, I believe Sonny's daughter wrote a reminiscence that was published in the '60s and then reprinted in the '70s. I think that's what piqued um, the man's interest, and uh, because I was just that just happens to be. A copy that I have at home, and I was looking at it, and it appears that that was what really got his attention. Mm -hmm. But was that Sonny Webb, Maker of Men? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. And then it was right. a collaboration between Webb Claremont, the Webb Schools in Claremont, right, and mm -hmm. Webb Bell Buckle. And yeah. Lawrence McMillan, my understanding is that he was given a sabbatical and that he was his his um, funding was half provided by Web Bell Buckle and half provided by Web Claremont. Did I make that up or <laughs> give me brand new information? <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't know. I'm learning things too. Okay. I, I, I think that this is, you know, our archivist, uh, Susan Howell and um, Hannah Little, our librarian, have given me, you know, all sorts of great um, history to, to chew on. But so they, they um, published the first edition of it and mm -hmm. then this one that we have now was for the 150th yes and we did um there's many different forwards in here right okay right because and I, I think what taylor stockdale did and and uh, we have vermont and, royster and, and vermont yeah taylor stockdale did the introduction and vermont royster did the forward mm -hmm. to the first edition okay and i think we've kept we, we've kept Vermont Royster. Yeah, no, it's all in here. Yeah, um, and, and, yeah and, that Vermont, but, but I think John Freer wrote the. Uh, Ray Broadhead wrote oh, for, okay. for one of them as well. Yeah, yeah. we've got more Um 
Well, how did, in your class, Ron, did students, I don't remember reading the schoolmaker in senior English because I had, I had you for ethics, but mm -hmm. not for senior English. So when you um, digested this with students, what was their feedback? I usually ended the, the, it was an independent reading choice, first of all, supplemental reading, whatever we called it at the time. But I did have them write an essay at the end. And, and, and in addition to multiple choice questions and such, um, the question was, what, what tradition would you like to see reinstated? And that was always an interesting question because it, first of all, proved to me that they'd done the reading, but secondly, that they'd given it some thought. And um, invariably, students would talk about this notion of self-governance. Mm -hmm. Students are the school, so to speak. And they would talk about how uh, that was a... Um, that was maybe a principle that that was increasingly uh, lost for a number of reasons, right? Um, but you're right about Sonny being, a, I don't know if we call him a revolutionary, he wouldn't appreciate that label, but as soon as the web school got going, the notion of the Carnegie unit came in. And so earning a credit was a matter of putting your fanny in a seat for a certain period of time. And both John and Sonny were um, adamantly against that kind of measurement. Um, they, had, they had students who were 12 to 20 years old. They were all in different places. In fact, placement was a big thing. And uh, it's, it's in the schoolmaker. You know, they would try to figure out who's, who's ready for the 10th grade, the Caesar class, who's ready for something more. And Sonny says in the book, he says, look, initially, let's look for the ones who, who are ready to advance. And let's do that. Um, so your question, <laughs> um, I, I was able to beat the students in the middle. LR had a good essay question yeah. for ethics, too. It's, I, I think as far as Sonny being, being a revolutionary, he, he was in some ways, I think, you know, very, 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 very traditional in, in, in yeah. the sense of his curriculum, which goes back to the Renaissance, you know, the idea of, you know, you, know, you teach, you, know, you teach Greek, you teach Latin, you teach rhetoric. Uh, you know, you teach some history, you teach some basic math, and that's it. And 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 in effect, they're going to learn as they learn their Greek and their Latin. They're going to learn a bunch of other stuff too, because they are reading and reciting the Greek and Roman philosophers, etc., and historians, and yada yada yada. Um, and uh, and and the method was. Yeah, in effect, what we would call memorization and regurgitation, which I have been beaten over the head over for my entire career, uh, because I think that's pretty good stuff myself. And uh, the, but uh, so, but no, but considered not at all progressive today. But uh, then the way that he allowed them, and this goes back to Ron and self governance. Um, the way that he allowed them to study, you know, was would be to us very revolutionary because we are creatures of the Carnegie unit and the you know forty five minutes you know you know fannies in seats kind of thing. Because Sonny let him he let him go outside. Now that wasn't something he invented. He learned that at Bingham School, you know, where he grew up, yeah, you know, and uh, over in North Carolina. Um, and uh, you know they they'd receive their assignment. You know, they'd go out. They'd have so many hours to memorize the thing, and then they'd come back in and recite. And uh, and 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 but otherwise they they were pretty much free to go anywhere they want. Well, no, they actually had delineated areas around the schoolyard where you know, you know one class could not go into the other. That would be a premise violation. But. But after that, they could sit under the trees, and you know, if the weather was at all good, and uh, and study, and, and that today would be, I think, considered, you know, you know either very progressive or very heretical. <laughs> 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 but, 
but, yeah. uh, but, but it worked. And the good people in Kalioka, when Kalioka Institute began in the moldy basement, they were appalled that oh, yeah. he let these children run wild. Yeah. That, that was the North Carolina kind of school. Now, when they come into Tennessee from North Carolina, things get interesting. And, and we're, we're doing missionary work. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Um, I'm getting text messages from Tennessee that are saying, from our producer, Jonathan Hawkins, we have, you know, top notch everything happening here at the web school. And um, the director of our alumni and um, a development office is in another room <laughs> texting me. So I'm, I'm actually not looking at my phone because I'm bored or not engaged, but I, I, we wanted to apologize for the audio kind of mishap that we had at the beginning, but I think all, everything's good now. Thank you for hanging with us. And I apologize, Mr. Smith, for looking at my phone. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, but this is this is um, you know technology. We're 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 working with it. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about Sonny's beginnings. Um, his father died when he was quite young, and I'm I'm wondering how you think that affected you know his his life and sort of how he interacted with students and maybe even his own children. Ron, do you? In reading and rereading, uh, one thing that strikes me every time is how John and Sonny were left with a, a mother who was trying to do virtually everything, including taking care of boarding students. And, and so these two grew up in a boarding school environment mm -hmm. and were part of that uh, from a very young age. Mm -hmm. And Sonny's understanding particularly what he learned from his sister um, about schooling because she taught inside the house, mm -hmm. inside the boarding house, she taught. And in fact, I believe Mr. Bingham or Colonel Bingham once said she was the best teacher out of all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let me just say that Sonny can be depicted a number of ways. He loved his mother. He loved his sister. He loved, <laughs> there were strong women involved in, everything he did and sometimes that might get <laughs> lost in the shuffle but god love those strong wheels oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we've known a few of them <laughs> uh, bless their hearts they are, they are plain spoke <laughs> that, that is a fact they are but, plain spoke uh, uh, and that's all but, all for the better but and he um yeah again i think that yeah you you, you lose a parent that that young um yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it, it it's it's awfully tough. And but but the uh, yeah. So his mother, his mother and his sister, you know, become really the focal points that in his life and and their whole thing. But his their whole deal was get him educated, mm -hmm. get him educated. Uh, his father's point was to do the same thing before he died because he he moved them down to Stony Point. Because they would, that was near or where Bingham School was, and uh, and and he wanted his children to be well educated. And you both brought up that um, you know Sonny's respect for um, female educators mm -hmm. and for women in the classroom. And my understanding as a student, you know, was that Webb was an all boys school up until the seventies, which is simply not the case. Women were a part of the history of the school from its, you know, from being the Kolioka Institute in 1870 up until I think it was 1953. And then women became all boys at that point. And then in the 70s, it went back to, to having women um, at the school. Um, was that a it seemed pretty progressive for the time to have women. They weren't rich, though, right? In that situation, they didn't board on campus or uh, houses. Well, that's the interesting thing about you know the, the 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 history of the school. Really, through Sawney's entire lifetime, is that uh, there there never were dormitories on the campus, uh, that, either in Kalioka or or in Bellbuckle, uh, up until the the later nineteen twenties. Because uh, Sony didn't believe in it, um, they, and this is and my research 
that in the archives, which mainly deals in the 1917 to 1919 period. Um, son Will, who was, yeah, you're pretty much running the school by that time. Sonny was still alive and still sort of had the whip hand, but was in the background. Uh, he would be fielding questions from applicants all the time. Are you a military school? Are you a military school? It was during World War I. And he said, no, we're not a military school. Um, that uh, my father doesn't believe in it. And he, he, he believes in the boarding house system, which I think I finally figured out what they meant by military school was, do you have them live in dormitories on the campus, like at West Point? or at Annapolis. And he said, no, we don't do that. He believed that they should live in town with families in a family situation. And so he had a long list of local folks, must have been, oh, 30 or 40 families that, that were willing to take in X number of students, you know, up up to I don't know eight eight or ten kids, you know, depending on you know the family, and so that's where the and and, and so it was a day school that in a boarding community, Bell Buckle was the boarding community, uh, and uh, and so the the students families would work out the. Um, yeah, you know, the, the the room and board uh, downtown, and Sawney would work out the uh, the tuition at the school, which wasn't much. Uh, but and so and and the, there were the the one dormitory on the campus was I think it was like a it, it was a house. It was up near Sawney House. They called it the Batch, and uh, and that was where the the poorest students, the ones who couldn't could not afford you know, the you know, room and board in town uh, could stay. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, and so girls, yeah, uh, and so the, the girls who were, you know, girls from the community, uh, friends of the family, um, uh, yeah, uh, children of faculty, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, they, they, they were always there. You see them in the pictures. Yeah. So why... Do you do you, where do you think that idea came from that there, because I, I think that there is an understanding that, that Webb was a boys school, you know, or that, that we, especially me as a student, you know, in the, the 90s, that I, we just assumed, or I assumed that, you know, boys, yeah. it was just for men until the 70s. Well, it was predominantly a boys school. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, but I can tell you, I was looking at the 1938 board up here. I knew one of the graduates, Olive Jean Patey was mm -hmm. one of the graduates. Mm -hmm. Well, the Patey family was a bell buckle family. But to speak of the town and gown, think about how much Sonny was engaged in the you know town politics and whatnot. Um, I remember reading in this rereading, I remember thinking, well, people move from Kalioka and build houses here in Bellbuckle to take on borders because that was good business. Mm -hmm. um, walk around the downtown area and look at a lot of these houses downtown mm -hmm. area. What am I saying? Walk around the Enchanted Village <laughs> and notice <laughs> these Victorian houses. Yeah, yeah. And now we have, and our we we had a gentleman walk up to our front door and say, "I lived here." Now, I mean, that's years and years ago. But um, man, I forget my point. Olive Jean was a was a young lady who w went here and loved it, and um, but she, sometimes the boarding house, the uh, students. Um, who were had family members who mm -hmm. ran these boarding houses, they went to Webb School. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this whole business about the batch is really interesting. My understanding is a lot of the people who were who lived there were sort of pre-divinity students. They were a lot of a lot of um, they had preacherly aspirations and whatnot. But you know that goes into Sonny's um Sonny loved a long shot. He loved the mm -hmm. the horse mm -hmm. that had the go in him and Mm -hmm. that's something that can get lost too yeah. because the more you talk about traditional boarding schools in the new england of the mm -hmm. new england oh, yeah. variety mm -hmm. the further you get away from this notion of sonny took he, he took some chances on some people oh oh yeah i mean the, the, the basically um 
who was it? Was it John Andrew Rice? He was at a bit of, back around the turn of the century, mm -hmm. 20th century, that basically, he said, yeah, if you could get to Bell Buckle, you could go to Sawney School. Uh, and and, and yeah, his admissions policy was very liberal. I mean, if, if you were in earnest, yeah, if you, if you seem to be a good person and were in earnest and had good recommendations and the rest of that, that they didn't worry about tuition too much. You know, he started Kalioka, they were bartering stuff. I mean, he took a pig for tuition one time and you know, wood burning stove and this, that, and the other thing. But, but, um, now, yeah, but yeah, as Rice points out, the yeah, yeah, the road out of Bell Buckle was just about as wide as the road in. <laughs> and we, yeah, some of the greatest scholars and some of the greatest scoundrels in the South could say they had done time at Sawney School, but um, but no, it's it, my understanding is they uh, they pretty much became an all boys school. In the post, either World War II or post World War II mm -hmm. period, due to a very unfortunate situation with uh, that a young lady who came from out of town and was allowed, Sunwell allowed her to board in town, and um, that she, um, that, and the story is that. Um, a lot of boys sort of got in trouble, uh, and 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 so Sun Will was so scandalized that uh, that he just said no 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 more of this no, no women yeah, no women <laughs> we're and, done with the women and uh, yeah so there were always female teachers too mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. one of the first um, mm -hmm. educators at Holyoke Institute was a was a female teacher as well right well Robina Mickle mm -hmm. was uh, I think his uh, assistant before John came out. And uh, yeah, and it's it's my understanding that uh, I think Miss Ida uh, was the language the, the talk down in uh, Miss Miss Ida. Is that Rosen? No, 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 that that's Emma. No, that's Emma, that's Emma Rosenberg. Okay, Emma. Uh, this is Miss Ida. Ida. So, somebody out there in the ether will know her last name. <laughs> I should know her last name. Um, um, but I think she was local, and she um, they they hired her in 1918 because so many faculty had been called to the war, and uh, I think she may have been the first real teaching faculty, mm -hmm. female teaching faculty here. But, the other thing that stood out to me as I read this as an adult and not a child who skimmed the contents of the pages <laughs> is um, I always thought that. Uh, Webb did not have students of color, um, which is uh, the story that stood out to me is that Sonny had a debt that he didn't know how to pay. And there was a, 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 a Choctaw chief, I believe, who wanted 23 boys to attend Webb. And Sonny didn't know how he could board 23. So he gave um, admittance to eight students and they boarded in a, in a separate boarding house, but we're, we're students at Webb yeah. in Sawney State. Mm -hmm. And that I, I, th I think you're, you're, you're right on both counts, okay. that, he, that he would not accept African-American students. That, 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 that was, that, yeah, that, that was the red line. He would accept uh, Native Americans. He, he accepted, for example, Chinese. Uh, Thomas Kelly is one of them. But, but that, those were all through Christian missionary organizations. So, uh, yeah, so, so in that sense, um, yeah, he, yeah he, he was, you know, as long as it came through the church, it was okay. Uh, but that, that I think his real blind spot was uh, African Americans. Uh, he, he would not accept them. So this sort of brings us to the, the difficult question of Sonny's legacy is, of course, you know, being a Confederate soldier and um, 
and <laughs> whose family had slaves. Mm -hmm. But the, <laughs> Macmillan sort of skirts the, the term slave mm -hmm. and... and mm -hmm. He sticks, he sticks with servant. Yes, yeah. yeah. for the most part. He, he, he nods. He slips a couple of times, but um, mm -hmm. my understanding is that the family never wanted North Carolina to secede from the Union. At least I read that. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm going with this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. Once that happened, Sonny fell into the ranks. Is that fair to say? He was a North Carolinian and he felt, you know, I, it's, it's difficult. It's a, it's a difficult thing to read and reread and revisit. Um, even in 1970 or thereabouts when Macmillan was composing all of this, um, he would have been aware of how polit politically incorrect this was. He wouldn't have used that term. He said, except for one tragic misfortune or one, Way. The, 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 the exception. They were the tragic exception. And so he recognizes that. Mm -hmm. um, and there are references to servants who stayed on mm -hmm. and really were servants. But it's a mess. It, it, and it's hard to unfold all of it. And I, I think I'm going to go with uh, more or less the cultural and ethical relativists on this. It's, it's very easy for us to judge uh, behavior in, in 1870 from the perspective of 2021. Um, was he a, was Sonny a man of his time as far as this racial understanding? He clearly did not believe that um, African-Americans were equivalent mm -hmm. and that's the yeah. tragedy yeah. that's the tragedy mm -hmm. and there's stories in the schoolmaker where he says um I, I i wish it i wish it weren't the case but he he accepted that it was the case mm -hmm. in some ways he was a mm -hmm. he was a product of that environment yeah i mean i think you if you ask the question i mean was was sony a racist i mean but sony by any modern definition was, was a racist um that he did not believe that African Americans were were equal to whites. That um, that he pretty much uh, you know adopted the basically the Southern white you know, post Reconstruction uh, attitude uh, toward African Americans. Um, his uh, I would say that his his yeah. His, his attitude was not virulently hostile, violently hostile, but, but it was certainly there. It was certainly paternalistic, highly paternalistic. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so there you go. And, and this is when I taught ethics, you know, and this would be, say, what, after 2010? I mean, I only taught ethics for about seven or eight years, something like that, maybe, maybe less. But, you know, the, it, it, during very fraught times, you know, in terms of race relations that in the country. And uh, and the my exam question mm -hmm. that was, okay. Yeah, how do you judge Sonny? Okay. I mean, do you judge him as you know the great educator? Yeah, you know, the man who developed, you know, generations of, of young people you know, with character and honor and, uh, you know, and you know, hard work, that, you know, did, did generations of little brown jugs, okay? Uh, yeah. Uh, or you know, do you judge him as the, you know, the, the Confederate, you know, the, the, the you, know, you know, product of a slaveholding society, a, a Southern you know, Confederate soldier, that and you know, a guy who pointedly excluded uh, African Americans from his school. And so, so what are you going to do? And um, yeah, yeah. How, how how do you judge the man? Yeah, do you judge him by his? Uh, yeah, do you judge him by his accomplishments or do you judge him by his faults? Uh, and and most of the yeah, mo most of the uh, 
responses that I got were, were ultimately, you know, you know, hey, you know, in a lot of ways, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, the guy's attitudes were were reprehensible. Uh, but on the other hand, yeah, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. And uh, yeah, so and it goes back to what you said. Yeah, you got. Yeah, he's he's a product of his time. He's a product of his time. Product of his place. Um, when he boarded the train and he went through Alabama and Tennessee and he was looking for this job at you know, he was twenty seven or thereabouts. He weighed one hundred eight pounds. He looked like a child. What he wanted more than anything was to be a teacher and to educate. And you know, I I tend to ha I have to say this: were it not for Sonny and that passion to teach, we wouldn't be sitting here today. There's no question of that. And, you know, I can talk about the, the other, the brother, John, and I think it's important too, but Sonny was the um, prime mover unmoved. That doesn't mean that we praise everything about him, but he was a, um, certainly a multifaceted person. He was heavily involved in the in the Methodist Church, mm -hmm. he when he went to Washington, with within a short period of time, he became sort of the voice of prohibition. I think that's mm -hmm. fair to mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. um, Sonny took a hard line on just about everything, and he was not afraid to be a minority as long as he believed that he was right. Mm -hmm. And and I, I think that's the highest compliment that mm -hmm. any of us. Uh, might receive because that's integrity. And I, and again, I, I'm not trying to uh, bracket out his faults. Um, I think what I'm trying to do is, is to say, well, there's a full-fledged human being to study here. Don't get stuck on any one thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know. Yeah, and I think McMillan points that out. In the schoolmaker, because at, at the end, at the end of one chapter, he yeah he lists uh, yeah, sort of gives a litany of, uh, of of you know responses from alums to Sawney and uh, yeah and some said he was the greatest teacher ever was right and, and others said he was <laughs> he, he he was you know vain that self absorbed arrogant that that etc and, and John Andrew Rice once again put it right said said yeah you either loved him or you hated him but you never didn't have an opinion about him yeah he uh, and, so, and and because he yeah he 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 had an opinion on everything and and wasn't afraid to uh, back off of it John Andrew Rice wrote a book called I Came Out of the 18th Century. <laughs> and the, the legend was that it was banned from the school's library for years and years and years. Now it's there now. And I, I'm, I'm glad you asked about when I, when I used to teach the schoolmaker because I would always mm -hmm. include the chapter mm -hmm. from John Andrew Rice's uh, book. And he had, he, he had plenty to say about Sonny's faults. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, if if I may say, when I came in 1978, it hadn't been banned. It wasn't banned, but it was the only volume in the closed stacks at the John Webb Library. You had to get permission to read that book. Well, as soon as I heard that, as soon as I knew it had been banned ever, I'm I'm not only going to read it. I'm going to make Xerox <laughs> copies, and and that's just a, an unfortunate thing. But I'm not a North Carolinian. I'm I'm a Memphian. <laughs> we decided that God loves you too. I came. I basically came out of the river or something. I'm not sure what we decided. But let's actually let's talk about that because not about being out of the river, but and I don't know how relevant this is. I think it's relevant today. And Sonny says this, he says, don't be a me too. I think that extended to his teachers. I know it should extend to teachers. Jack Hefner told me when I first started here, he said, don't try to be like your favorite teacher. At best, you'll be a, a pale imitation. 
Mm -hmm. And one of the things that LR and I have very different pedagogical approaches to things. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good for the students. And so mm -hmm. I think anything that hints of uniformity, I'm not going to rail on the Carnegie mm -hmm. unit. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I'd start. But anything that was mechanically um, done mm -hmm. to shoehorn teachers, mm -hmm. or to sh I'm going to say that Webb was not traditional at all. And I've had students come in here from the 1990s and the aughts and whatnot, and they've always said, you know, I went to such and such a school naming no names. Mm -hmm. Everybody seemed the same there. Whereas here, there was a toleration. Now, I would say a toleration for eccentricity, oh. but, but I think the better way to put it is appreciation for yeah. different the the assumptions here were different. Okay, I came out of, oh, oh, come on. You came out of the MUS, right? Okay. Yeah. I came out of the Asheville School. Right. And the Asheville School, yeah, God love the Asheville School, but um, yeah, it was basically the Hill School South. I mean, it was New England Prep South. Uh, okay, and it had a certain attitude and a certain outlook. And those schools back in the day, I'm not saying that, that it is that way today. But again, when Sawney started his school, the New England prep schools uh, were for the sons of the wealthy elite. Okay, well, there wasn't a wealthy elite in the South that when, uh, you know, when Sawney started his school. I suppose you could say that, you know, you know, that 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 the whites were the elite, but they sure weren't wealthy. That and Not so in this that, area, certainly yeah. in Nashville or yeah, yeah. Belmead or yeah, any well, other. this was this, this whole area is pretty impoverished. Yeah, you know, given yeah you know, Reconstruction, I mean, you know, that, that the war had been over ten years and. Uh, so uh, yeah, this this was this was a blasted region, and so Sony couldn't make you know the school for you know for 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 sons of wealth because there weren't any sons of wealth around there, and uh, and so they uh, yeah, and and so this school I think from the get go developed a much more democratic uh, outlook uh, and attitude, which I think you know lends to this idea of yeah, marching to the beat of a different drummer. Yeah, sort of, sort of doing your own thing. Uh, yeah, the the rest of that. Um, and so, yeah, I I found the culture to be uh, quite different now yeah, from the culture of uh, yeah of, of, of that school I came from in the east. <laughs> but so what? Did Sonny intend for it to be a different kind of school? Because he did send, he sent Sun Will to Andover. Mm -hmm. Yes, he went to, he went uh, north. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I think because he said he couldn't, what, he, 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 they were too close. Or he had uh, done too much. He had been <clears throat> overly influential. Mm -hmm. I, Sun, he had had enough mm -hmm. of Sonny and Sonny knew it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the let's go to the best possible academic mm -hmm. school he knows of. Let, let him get some distance, which you know, let the punishment fit the crime, make the treatment of the student fit what the student needs. And I think Sonny mm -hmm. did that. And he he talks mm -hmm. about in the in the schoolmaker. He says, "I don't believe in giving uniform punishments for particular events." In fact, he says, "I can't give you a, a, a list of all these rules." I want to have a fundamental understanding that you do nothing on this lie. You don't lie. You don't cheat. You don't steal. Um, or that's placing a lot of faith in students. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a violent presupposition, yeah. isn't mm -hmm. that? Yeah. 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 And, and, and that's why the train ran both ways. <laughs> uh, and but the train from Memphis, <laughs> I was a, uh, I was uh, well aware of the the trade in Memphis, mm -hmm. and my my mother and father, and my grandparents, mm -hmm. all knew exactly where uh, Web School was, and reminded me on occasion that if I started hanging around with the wrong people, like Carlo, uh -huh. 
that's I right. I might have to take a little a little uh, mm -hmm. venture yeah. to the to the to Middle Tennessee. Yeah. So yeah. so that's that business mm -hmm. of are you a reform school? Are you a military school? It changes. It changes. Yeah. And 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 again, McMillan. Well, wait a minute. Is it? No, 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 no. Um, it's Vermont Royster mm -hmm. that yeah points out that he and he said there was an intoxicating freedom mm -hmm. in the discipline of the school in that. If you accepted the discipline that if you bought into the honor code, that yeah, if you did that, then yeah, if you studied hard, if you really tried to study, then shoot, they pretty much left you alone. Okay, you could do your own thing. Yeah, yeah, as long as you yeah, as long as you behave like a gentleman. Followed the honor code and uh, yeah, and kept your grades up. Shoot, there weren't any other rules, you know, telling you where you could go and where where you couldn't go. Uh, yeah, and if I could take it a step beyond that, um, Sandy Truett tells me when she first started teaching here that the um, the A plus plus scholars they earned all kinds of privileges. If they mm -hmm. decided they didn't want to, they wanted to take a class cut. They took a class cut. The um, the scholars, I believe, before we were the feet, we were the scholars. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. let me loosen my tie a little bit here. <laughs> um, I think the favored few were the disciplined, the eager, mm -hmm. the, um, I think the scholars were almost always in the spotlight. Uh, there was a foot of every class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was the top of the class. You knew where you stood. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think maybe that's a tradition I wouldn't mind seeing yeah. um, re-emphasized. Re yeah, and, and Royster points that out. I, again, he says, yeah, I mean, the big men on campus were the A students. They were the chairmen mm -hmm. uh, because they could go downtown and by by cane bottom chair and uh they, and, and so so they didn't have to sit on the cold cold ground outside they they sit in that chair lean up against the tree and do their studies uh, and i say that uh, because lunsford from north carolina probably would have been a chair oh good lord no now i would have i would not have been but I would have known what they did to get there. And the competitive drive in me would have at least engaged enough to think that's a pretty good deal. It's worth striving to get to the top of the class because, wow, I like to take the occasional. I, I love taking cuts as a teacher sometimes. <laughs> but, but at any rate, I know, I know what you're going to say. I would have been that boy who, who, who of, of whom later Sonny said, if I'd only known he had a hookworm, I wouldn't have treated him so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, the school went through quite a bit of health. Oh, yeah. well, I mean, it, the, I didn't realize, you know, the, the school survived. Um, there was cholera and there was the hookworm and there's the Spanish flu. Smallpox. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's about, that's that's about it. Yeah, um, I this think it's smallpox first of all in Kalioka, then cholera a couple of years later. Which took I think uh, one of their stu a fourteen year old student, right? Something like that. Uh, a fourteen year old girl had passed away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, may, may, uh, I may have. Yeah, and. Um, that 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 the hookworm was endemic. Uh, yeah. What do they, they call the southern the lazy yeah. 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 It, yeah. it really was very offensive to to the southerners. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> and it was just it was because of the poor poor sanitation. I mean, yeah, they, 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 because they, yeah, they, they they just had latrines and yeah. Uh, yeah so uh, that but uh, yeah, then there was so-called Russian flu in the 1890s. That, that was a pretty big influenza outbreak. And then, um, yeah, but then the Spanish flu 
1918, October 1918. That was, uh, yeah, yeah, that, 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 those were exciting times around here. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Yeah, the school's no stranger to, this is a most resilient institution. Um, not only do you have the, um, the, the illness, the scares there, and, and when we were first doing Smithson lessons, we were doing it because everybody mm -hmm. was trying to get a handle on this, uh, mm -hmm. this, oh, this COVID, oh, this COVID yeah. mess, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember telling LR, I remember saying, well, I think Webb has survived virtually everything. And that includes some things that McMillan mm -hmm. doesn't talk a great deal about. Yeah. Uh, the, the dispute amongst the John Webb families and the Sonny Webb families, he mm -hmm. mentions it, mm -hmm. it was bitter. Mm -hmm. uh, the fallout was significant. The coming of the board of trust, and we mentioned mm -hmm. this already, mm -hmm. uh, but this school mm -hmm. has been able to um, maintain a sense of its own integrity that mm -hmm. I find remarkable. Now, I, and I've been here a long time, and Lars has been here longer, and we've seen all the weeds, mm -hmm. but I can still see the junior room above it. And, 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 you know, the other thing we talked a lot about was how web school in its expectations was, mm -hmm. it was, everything was aspirational. And our mm -hmm. colleague Emery Lager used to say, look, we don't always succeed. We occasionally mm -hmm. lie, cheat, steal. We, we flub up. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we throw out. Mm -hmm. those ideals and mm -hmm. i think that, that's just that's wonderful it's wonderful mm -hmm. to have a core uh mm -hmm. that has sustained or has been maintained uh, and, and i think as 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 long as we keep our eyes on the prize that which is to live as close as closely to the precepts of the honor code as as we possibly can and and again i think yeah, we we have over the years, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, asked the question, yeah, you know, what are we about? Yeah, you know, what what's the goal? What are we doing here? And Sony's goal was uh, it is pretty pretty explicit. I mean, it's we're here to build character. That's that's the first thing we're here to do. Yeah, uh, we're here we're here to build students of good character. Uh, I'm not going to take a student who that who who exhibits poor character that and i'm not going to and and if i and if i get duped into taking one i'm not going to keep him uh, but if 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 he's willing to try if he's willing to you know to become to go along yeah, then then we're going to take it but character was the first thing then academic discipline uh, was the next thing and um yeah, and again, just reading Sun Will's letters to to students, yeah, in, in the 1917, 1918 period. I mean, gosh, man, there there were kids here who really struggled. And uh, but they kept them. They you know, they, they 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 kept them. It wasn't like, you know, you know, you're you know, oh, you make it, yeah, you make it D or an F, we're gonna throw you out of here. It was uh no, I mean if you're trying. And if you're willing to keep trying, we're, you know, we're going to keep you. We're going to work with you. That. Did Sonny tell the Little Brown Jack story to students regularly, like you told us? Or was that a one-off? Not to my knowledge. That, 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 that was sort of you know, one of his regular speeches. And, uh, and apparently he told it all over. Yeah, he, yeah got, really towards, you know, towards the, I'd say what, after about, what about 1900 or so 195 i mean sony started started to yeah his fame was established and uh so he, he started to go on speaking tours and uh yeah so so he was more he was off i think particularly when sun will got to the point where where sony thought he could take care of things yeah you know by himself so so Sonny hit the road. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. And he raised money for the YMCA. Mm -hmm. He raised money for uh, the war effort. Uh -huh. Right, raised money for, for traveling libraries. 22. Yeah. Uh -huh. that book I, I drove the bookmobile. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question so. from Webb Fall, and he asked, um, how did Lawrence McMillan and Vermont Royster know each other? 
I don't know. I don't uh, either. Yeah. Although Vermont Royster was uh, probably one of the, at the time, uh, when, and probably still one of the most illustrious graduates right. of the school, and editor of the Wall Street Journal, mm -hmm. the rest of that. So possibly some, somebody asked. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, somebody asked him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've got I don't know. I've got nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds like a. I need to Google it. Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> so, somebody on the ether. Somebody let, let, the let us know. But in the, the first, the first printing in seventy one, seventy two, you 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 would want the most esteemed mm -hmm. alum, He's the, mm -hmm. and it makes sense to me to go and ask yeah. Vermont Worcester to do it. Mm -hmm. I knew of this book before I started teaching at Web. Well, the book had pretty wide circulation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a book about a schoolmaster. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, on the surface, doesn't sound like a mm -hmm. uh, a gripping thriller of a story. Mm -hmm. But again, back to my 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 point a moment ago. Um, what a story! Mm -hmm. What an amazing story! Uh, yeah, and, and I think again, one one of the you know very non traditional, you know. Things about Sony was was the way he you know, he dealt with with children. But uh, you know, so, so, so uh, what is a, a Puritan Socrates mm -hmm. uh, with piercing blue eyes? Yeah, that sort of sort of had this Zen like way ma manner with uh, with kids and uh, and then uh, John had his Dante club, right? Uh huh. And uh -huh. he uh, he had his own way with with children. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because the easy thing to do is to say Sony was the was the um, the disciplinarian, and John was the scholar. And frankly, the, the two have a lot of overlap. And, and I, as I was reading this time, uh, Sonny said at some point, he said, character is an educated will. Mm -hmm. So th mm -hmm. that that incorporates everything in, in, in the classroom and, and elsewhere. Yeah. Um, we started to talk in ethics about how, well, if knowledge is power, then knowledge put to good uses is a superpower. We that was one of our big riffs, oh, yeah. or maybe I'll take credit for that. Yeah, no, you you do that. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, superpower. Anyway, um, Sonny did not believe. I mean, yes, there was rote learning, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There was knowing this, but that's the stuff of which essays are made. And if you you look at the yeah. progression from right, and and that's <laughs> what yes, yeah. yeah, if you. If memorize, I mean, huh. that memorizing a declamation that is like memorizing Latin and Greek, it requires mm -hmm. intellectual discipline. Okay, and you've got to have that intellectual discipline to do anything else. And so, so yeah. That, and uh, but I, it helps I, to I, know that Jefferson mm -hmm. was president after Washington began the mm -hmm. the story. In other words. Yeah. You need a little John and you need yeah. a little Sonny. And that's and, something we talked a yeah. lot about. And that, yeah, and I guess that's my deal. I mean, that's, <laughs> that, that, I mean, that, that's my deal. That's, if, there's, if, 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 if I've learned one thing out of my career here is that you know, for this place to work properly, that you got to have a Sonny and you got to have a John. That you got to have a Sonny for the younger ones. Okay. Because and Sony never taught, to my knowledge, Sony never taught above sophomore sophomore year. Okay, Sony was best uh, with kids, you know, 13, 14 years old, 15 years old, something like that. Okay, because they needed his discipline. Yeah, you know, they needed that trapping. Yeah, you know, they yeah you know, because again they you know, their their will had not yet been educated. Then. And so now, by the time they get to be juniors or seniors, if if they had gone, if they had survived Sonny's mill, then they got John, mm -hmm. and and John's just pure intellect. He, he's just pure higher order learning. And, uh, and it's like the what the guy in here said. He said, you know, Sonny birched our knowledge into us. <laughs> he whooped it into us. <laughs> that John wept our knowledge mm -hmm. into us. And uh, yeah, and so yeah, you can't you can't, yeah you can't treat a senior the way you're going to treat a sophomore. 
uh, you know, they're two different people entirely. And so, yeah, you know, and the schools and you know, the, the, yeah, if, if, if you judge it by, you know, the number of Rhodes Scholars that, that we were turning out, uh, yeah, this school was, you know, was hitting on all cylinders between about 1890 and 1910. Okay. And, um, uh, that that's when Sonny and John were about at the at the peak of their powers, and uh, yeah, so yeah, and and again, we've got Sonny's here and we've got John's here. We just got to make sure they're in the right place. Well, when I when I need to still <laughs> you have said um, it's kind of finding the beauty in the balance mm -hmm. yeah. between mm -hmm. two yeah. two different very different styles of teaching. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, well, we have come to our, our hour mark. <laughs> I feel like we could probably go. Oh, for we, the, uh, we go another hour. For another <laughs> hour. Um, you have no idea. <laughs> we're, we're really just getting warmed up. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Ron Smith and L.R. Smith, for another hour of Smiths and Lessons. Um, I hope we have more to come from the two of you in the future. Um, thank you all so much. I hope you all have a good night. <laughs>